field a team, how it is that you build a team that wins. That's not something that's the exclusive domain of the Air Force or a baseball team or something like that. If you know how to team, you can apply that anywhere. And so, uh, courtesy of a of a not asked for cancer diagnosis and courtesy of a career coming to an abrupt halt at a time when it didn't need to, I joined the entrepreneurial world. I get into the business of teaching teamwork centered around the proper practice of accountability, and that's VMAX Group. I've been at this now for, I think, effectively five and a half years, really, um, and loving it, building a team now, growing our own team, practicing our own principles in the way that we team, and teaching uh, teams that want to be better how to maintain focus on a positive outcome in a sea of never-ending disruption. Life, at the end of the day, is always going to be hard. How it is that we deal with the challenges is the part that really matters. And it's our ambition to inspire the world with hope in a better tomorrow, even if the news keeps on getting worse by the day. And that I think summarizes how it is we come to be here. I love that. That's, that's so good. Such good wisdom. And I'd love to kind of break down um, kind of the book even, and obviously it's in the title, but you talk about, first of all, uh, the debrief, how important that is. And I love that concept. And then also, I just kind of want to read a quote, too, um, from the book. One of my favorite quotes, uh, you say, if you want to stay hugely successful, you have to stay hugely humble. And I love that because I think humility is in so much learning. Um, and obviously, it's impar- it's apparent with you, with with talking to you and, and seeing how you interact. Um, I do believe hum- you need humility to get past failures. Uh, so first of all, let's go back to the debrief. Why is the debrief so important? Can you kind of break that down, um, in assessing failures, um, you know, when you were a pilot and, and now in business? Yeah. Um, why is the, why is the debrief so important? It's important because the best teams on the planet know how to learn well, and they, they really know how to fail well together because they harness failure as a learning opportunity. And in a world where we're kind of accustomed to being really critical, like left to our own devices, we can find faults with anything. We can think, yeah, mm-hmm. I should have done it that way. God, it's, this thing could have been so much better, whatever. Um, being able to fail well in a positive way, building the bonds of trust is really important to fielding teams that can handle anything. And, uh, you know, you look at you look at what's demanded of the high performance teams, specifically military teams that are going to go out there in harm's way. Uh, and try to win. They're not going to win all their all their battles. Um, how they respond to not winning those battles is going to determine whether or not they win the war. And what I found is that as a fighter pilot, it was impossible to do everything perfectly. Um, it was actually almost impossible to do everything brilliantly. Like if you could get most of the things done to some degree of sufficiency, that was cool because at the end of the day, it's really complex stuff. I mean, think of the speeds that you're operating at. You know, we're zipping across the sky, you know, just shy of twice the speed of sound. Like these are unfathomable speed. And, and, and you don't you don't sense it when you're out there flying along and you're just, you know, by yourself. You could be going Mach 7 and, and it wouldn't mean anything to you. But when you when you when you merge, as we call it, when you pass another airplane in the sky and both of you are you know scooting along, that's where you get a true sense of holy crap, this is fast. You know, and the next thing that you know is you're going from fast to kind of slow. You're now pulling back on the stick and the raptor over here and the rider between your legs over here and the eagle. And you're, you're almost instantaneously after you pull back on the stick at nine times the force of gravity. So right now we're at one. That's where we're accustomed to being. It's, that's earth pulling on us to keep us from floating off into space. Take this, whatever your body weight is, magnify that by nine times. And that's, that's what you're experiencing up there. And one of the things that happens to your, uh, to your blood is it, it's being pulled out of your brain into your extremities. It wants to pull into your hands and feet. So you've got to fight just to stay awake. And you're fighting to keep blood in your eyes so that you can see, so that you can see the dot that you're fighting against who's across the circle from you that's trying to kill you. It's a, it's such a, it's such a demanding environment. I mean, like even in a training session, on a mission where it's just to go out there and rehearse, you could be dead. You'd be yeah. dead. You could be dead. You could lose consciousness. And depending on where you are in that, in that loss of consciousness, you're going to hit a mountain, you're going to hit the water. Um, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous environment. And then if you had combat to that, now somebody's shooting at you while you're doing all this, it's a really complex thing. 